So, I remember going to go see Black Panther opening night. The conversations around Killmonger were hilarious. So many people came away saying, he's killed some people. Okay, he's killed a lot of people, but he's only misguided. He needs love. He needs a nice home-cooked meal. Nigga, what this man needs is online courses. I'm trying to learn how to scam me some rich folks, too. I want the purple herb myself. I need superpowers. Because Marvel What If Episode 6 kept this man a demon. How you foreign nigga stop it? I was born in the tropics. I'm the way people the mosh pit. And they came with a starship. Yeah. yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I'm really from the tropics. Fuck is you doing the next? What's good, Digital Cop Squad? Y'all know what it is, so check it, right? I ain't y'all look. Marvel What If Episode 6. So many fun things to talk about. And to me, it's interesting and crazy even to go back to where it all started. 2008. We got your boy Tony Stark. He's in the back of the military cruiser. You know, chopping it up. Gotta have that liquor. We know he's an alcoholic. And my man loves peace. Who doesn't love peace? But unfortunately, the character never really got peace too much after this eventful day. We know fuckery ensues, right? That missile that peeled his scalp back and Iron Man actually winds up being launched into the sky by Eric Killmonger in this scene. Very, 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 very coincidental, by the way. But hey, we're gonna get into that a little bit later. And this is the launch pan to their friendship in this universe. No cap. Eric had me in the first half. Oh, look at this man. He done turned over a new leaf. Lord blessed us with a good kill manga. <laughs> <laughs> My man's had the ability to trick and manipulate so many individuals. He knew who, how, why, when, the keen brain power it takes to think 20 moves ahead when your opponent is only on a second move is what makes the character so interesting to follow in the Marvel comic books, especially with the Michael B. Jordan version. And when you saw him get that rich white cosign from Tony Stark that he had to tap dance a little bit for. A lot of good it did, dear old dad. You close with yours? He died too. Gang violence. We are same, same. Same, same, but different, but still same. You said, okay, I'm kind of seeing how this could evolve into ultimate fuckery for the character, but you never really saw it going as deep as it went for the episode. That's how you know you have really good writing when you're not able to predict what's going to happen next. I love this fucking show. All of the advanced battle tactics and non-battle tactics of Killmonger really came to fruition where after introducing Tony Stark to Vibranium, he's able to manipulate that situation into getting the US government, the military, to actually meet with Claw for more Vibranium. My man manipulated the military. <laughs> That's some dangerous shit. And in that meeting, we had an opportunity to experience an incarnation of Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa one more time, which is heartwarming to me and so many people because I honestly thought, what if episode two was going to be his last time ever doing anything for the character? But here we are in episode six, still having a scene with him. That was very, very fun. And when he shows up to stop Eric Killmonger, we had some nice dialogue between the characters that definitely painted an image similar to the movie where he's referring to him as cousin, etc., etc. Now, you got to go deep inside this scene for the fuckery. <laughs> it's some Dr. Umar Johnson type fuckery. 
in this shit. To Eric Killmonger, when it's time to do what the fuck he gotta do, it don't matter if you're black or white. Ask Rhodey. <laughs> Ask that motherfucker. Because when Rhodey was first getting ready to get killed by Killmonger, I was like, no, not Rhodey. You gotta be part of the system. Huh? What'd that nigga say? To change the system. Oh, Lord have mercy, another coon. What the fuck is he talking about? Oh, hell no. Off of this nigga's head. Immediately. I was like, no, nah, man, they got Rhodey. You know, Rhodey over there tap dancing a little bit. <laughs> when it was time for that radical change, boy, you saw Rhodey like, hey, I love the system. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Off with this nigga's head. That scene was definitely boatloads of fuckery. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of people on YouTube that'll break that down. Ooh, let me get my Bible out. <clears throat> Chapter 1, <laughs> verse 15, and try to break down that scene on a deep, deep level. We ain't going there, but it had fuckery. Speaking of the fuckery with Rhodey being killed, they did an awesome job at transitioning that emotional burden onto the next scene with Tony Stark, where we're finally able to see a lot of what made him become Iron Man, right? We're able to see it from a different angle where he's thinking ahead of the people that are trying to think ahead of him. And we saw that in the scene where he was using Jarvis to track Eric and he knew he murdered Rhodey. The next scene played out unfortunate. Uh, my man's got murdered, but this is Marvel What If. And apparently they love killing Tony Stark. That's happened numerous times. <laughs> my man keeps dying. God damn. <laughs> It's the old little Wayne song. I feel like dying. I feel like It's been like damn type deaths in relation to his character. As we get to the ending of the episode, it felt open ended. Right? The ending felt like maybe we're gonna come back to this moment in season two or season three because it had an open ending like episode five did. So I would love to see them come back to this episode next season, and episode five next season, where we're able to see Eric Killmonger's onslaught versus the rest of the world. Will we see maybe Nick Fury target Eric Killmonger as an Avengers level threat and try to make a makeshift Avenger? That could be really, really cool, right? A what if scenario for the entire Avengers team that focuses on Eric Killmonger as the Loki-esque villain. That'll be fun, man. I don't know if they're gonna do that, but it felt open-ended. So, that's episode six, man. Definitely a lot of fuckery. A lot of fuckery in this shit. <laughs> and y'all know your boy love the fuckery. Anyway, it's been weird, but it's been real. Bruh. Bruh, you know, stuff out here happening for your boy. Uh, as you notice, the heat ain't so bad in Chicago no more. No more sweat. <laughs> Feels good. That was weird. Why did I say that? I don't know. Get out of here, bitch. When I pull up, she gonna look though. Look at he mad, ain't look broke. She bad as hell, but can't cook though. It don't matter, but you still watching me while I did it for the look though. A hundred feet worth of drip, don't drown this fly shit. That's the look though. And look though, look though. I'm the wave, you can look though. I'm something different, I don't think you get it, but I still did it for the look though. Look though, look though. Yeah, I did it for the look though.